Hi, it's Diane from Spencer Rock Sewing Patterns and today I have a new furlough freebie for you. This is my little bummity bum bag. I've got no idea how to spell that, but I had to come up with a name. And um, obviously we have a great problem saying fanny pack here in the UK without giggling. As most of you already know, it has a completely different meaning here. But call it what you will, bum bag, fanny pack, belt bag, hip bag. It's the easiest little lined bummity bum bag. An easy sew zip, fully lined and fits everybody. Wear it on your waist, your hip, across your chest. It's also my new house bag. As I don't go out anymore, uh, I still need to carry things around the house. I need my phone, I need my glasses, I need a, a key with me all the time. So I've been using this on a daily basis. It's really handy. So sorry, there's no models available. You've got to put up with pictures of me. See, I've had to put my trousers on today. Normally I just sit here in my t-shirt and undies and nobody is any the wiser. Make it from the recommended measurements given in the video or download the PDF pattern piece. But you can make these in any shape and any size. The pattern is designed so you can change it up however you want to. It could be square, round, oval, a triangle, even dog shape if you want. The instructions are going to be the same. I've made a smaller version here just to illustrate and I can use that on my belt just as a little wallet. Or you could have two on the same belt. And the great thing about them is you just add them to your own belt. So there's no guessing at sizes, embarrassingly asking people what waist size they are and who fits what. Just grab your belt from your wardrobe and thread it on. Or their belt from their wardrobe and thread it on. You could also make them with a soft strap or use webbing and just toss it across your chest. So, for example, this is one I've made with a luggage strap. I bought the luggage strap from Etsy. I didn't embroider it myself. Um, and it's much softer if you're wearing it across chest. There's lots of ways to use it. It's great for the house, for every day, for outside, even dog walking. Wear it around your hips for your phone and keys or crossbody with your mask and sanitizer. Or under your shirt, just make it in a soft fabric and you can use it with your valuables while you're travelling. It even fits a Lewis wallet inside. Or why not make it without the belt carrier? You don't need to add that strip on the back. And you can just add it to your handbag as a really cute little pouch. Or you can stitch it to the front of a tote or backpack to make a really nice feature. Decorate the front in any way you want to. Add an extra pocket, a corsage, badges, studs. The little one there I put studs on, but you could go absolutely bananas with it. Make it your own by adding pockets and credit card slots inside. There's room to do that if you want to. All the instructions and the measurements are in the video. You don't need anything else, but for ease, you can just download the pattern piece free from my Facebook group. If you're not already a member, I'll put the link in below. Suitable fabrics for this project? Well, just about anything goes with this. I'd stick with quilt cottons for the lining, but after that, there aren't many layers. So really anything right from quilt cottons to canvas through to cork, vinyl, waterproof canvas, oil skin, even leather. So if you're ready, let's go sew. So for our project today, you're going to need to cut the following. I'll add all the sizes into the text below the video too. And if you want to download the pattern piece for ease, you can also do that. So we're going to need four pieces of piece A and one piece of piece B. A zip, and you can also add a logo badge if you wish to. So sizes, we have piece A and piece A as I say, you can just download the pattern piece or you can cut a rectangle size 23 by 14 and a half centimetres. That's in inches, nine by five and three quarter inches. As I say, use the paper pattern piece if you prefer. So in that we want to cut two outer, two lining and four pieces of medium weight interfacing. Now I've gently curved the bottom edge of mine I've made them all match, as I say, use the paper pattern piece or you can just use a cup or a mug or a pencil pot just to gently curve those bottom edges. So leave the top edges square. Then I need piece B. So piece B is 17 and a half by five centimetres. 
or seven by two inches. And we're just gonna cut one strip in vinyl or any other non-fraying fabric. Just as an aside, if you're making a different size in this bag, just make sure that's about two inches shorter than the overall width of the bag. You'll also need a zip, and that's an 11 inch or longer piece of continuous zip, or 11 inches or longer of a fixed length zip. If you're making another size in the bag, make it about two inches wider than the bag itself, just to give you plenty of room to work with. My zip that I'm using today is one and a quarter inches wide. One inch wide works fine too, and we'll talk about that as we go through. I'm using a number five zip, but a number three zip will work equally as well. You can also add a logo badge, a metal badge, a woven badge. You could even embroider the fabric before you start. And if you are using a thinner fabric, like I am today, so a quilt cotton, or this is like a very thin canvas almost, then I'm going to add a layer of thin fusible fleece. So I'm using H640 from Violin, nothing too thick, but you absolutely don't need to add anything there at all. Certainly not if you're using cork or vinyl, it's literally just if you're using the thinner fabrics. And I've cut that down by a centimetre or three eighths of an inch all the way around so it doesn't get into my seam allowances, so it avoids adding any bulk. Now I'll head over and fuse those together. I've already fused my interfacing, my medium weight interface into the back of my lining and outer. And I'll now add my fleece just to my outer, so the centre of my outer pieces. So we're ready to make a start. And we're going to start with piece A and outer, just the back panel. So I'm going to select this one for my back panel. I'm going to place that right side up. I'm going to take my piece B and lay it centrally right side up about three centimetres or one and one eighth of an inch down from the top. Grab my trusty dirty ruler and there we go. So that is about there. You can normally just eyeball that centrally. We want that shorter and well out of the seam allowances, this piece B, um, because our belt is going to pass through that. So that's fine for position. Do check the width of that against the belt you intend to use this bag with. This is two inches wide, but you don't want to make it two inches wide and then find the belt is two and a half inches wide. We'll probably just use a narrow one inch belt with it, so it'll be fine at this. But do check if you want to use it with a really wide one or a really narrow one and make it smaller, then that's fine. Just tailor it to your own belt. I've got mine's two inches, that's in position. And now I'm going to take that to the machine and I'm going to stitch along the top and the bottom, about three mil or one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Just at top and bottom, I'm going to leave the sides open because obviously you want to pass your belt through that. My curved edges are to the bottom and this is positioned against the straight top edge. So in my machine today, I've got my stitch length set to about three for this. I've just got a regular 14s needle in there. We're not going to be going through masses and masses of layers. It's fine for a domestic machine. So I'm going to stitch that in place. Use a guide foot if you want to. Back stitch beginning and end. So that's the top done. Now I'm going to do the bottom. I've used matching thread here for this uh, dark band. Obviously you can match that to the colour of your fabric. I quite like it being in a darker. That'll match my badge on the front and my zip. Keep trimming your ends, you know me. Trim, -ity trim, trim all the way through so you don't get anything at the end. So that's our back panel complete. Stitch top and bottom. We can put that to one side. We're ready to start on the front. I'll change the thread in my machine now to match my outer. So now we're going to work on our front panel and it's a really nice easy zip insertion method. Nothing to worry about at all. So I'm going to take one of my piece A's in outer and one in lining. So obviously the one that doesn't have the belt carrier on it. I'm going to slip these across. Now if you look at the paper pattern piece, it has got a line on there to indicate where it is. 
but we're just going to slit it 3.75 centimeters down from the top which is one and a half inches down from the straight top edge and we'll do that on both you can do them individually or you can put them together and do them i'll just put them together so you want the nice curved edge to the bottom make sure they're lined up perfectly i'll just put a couple of clips in so it can't move check 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 Okay, and then I'm going to slice through that at one and a half inches or 3.75 centimeters from that top straight edge. Lots of personal choice here. You can make it further down or nearer to the top, but obviously you need plenty of space at that top edge for your seam allowances. So be brave. Nice clean slit through there. So take the two narrow strips and put those to one side for now and we'll just work on the bottom of the panel to start with. So separate those, take the outer piece, keep the curved edges towards the bottom, grab your zip and lay it face down on top with the puller to the right when closed clip that in place. We're putting it on centrally with plenty of space at either end of the zip so we've got loads of room to work with. So there's our zip with the edge clipped to the top straight edge of the panel. It's face down, lots of space on either side. Now one of the things that helps you achieve a really nice straight zip is to base that on. You don't need to, but if you're a newer bag maker or me, I always prefer to baste the one side of the zip on before I, I put the second side of the fabric on. So I'm just going to take that to the machine and do that now. I've put a zipper foot onto my machine already and I've changed to my outer colour to match my outer fabric. So let's baste that. I'll just baste it close to the outer edge of the zip there. So I'll pull that zipper out of the way to one side so we don't have to move it while we're stitching now. I'm going to take my lining piece, the corresponding piece, and lay that on top, matching up the sides and the top, and clip that in place. So we've got right sides together, zip in the middle like a zip sandwich. I'm going to stitch across that top edge. I usually like to do it from the front. I'm going to stitch across that top straight edge with a quarter inch or six mil seam allowance. Because we've pulled that zip puller out of the way onto the free edge of the zip tape, the loose edge, we don't have to worry about lifting our press apart foot and moving while we're halfway across the zip. So that again, that helps with keeping a straight edge and a straight zip insertion. Back stitch beginning and end. So there we are, that's one side of our zip inserted. How easy is that? So if I take that to my ironing board now, I'm going to press that open. So I've got then the wrong sides together. Get a nice crease on the top, both with the lining and with the outer. Back in a mo. So I press that open nicely and your edges should be matching on the bottom of the lining and the outer. Just put a clip in there to make sure it's nicely held in position. And I'm going to take that back to the machine and I'm going to top stitch along the zip edge on the fabric, just three mil or an eighth of an inch from the fold. There's my edge top stitched. So let's repeat with the other side. So grab your strips again, make sure that your outer is the right way. 
We don't want it upside down because it really won't tie in if you've got a print that's a one-way print. So that's going on that way. So with the outer, I'm going to lay that right side down on top. I'm going to match the top edge of the zip and the sides of the bag. Clip in place. Again, I'm going to run over this with a basting stitch because I find it's easier to keep everything in line that way. You don't have to, you can just sandwich it straight away if you prefer. Flip it over and we're going to sandwich that zip again. So take your lining and lay that right side down on top lining it up with the edges and that top long edge and we'll stitch across that again with a six mil or a quarter of an inch seam allowance keeping your zip out of the way at the end still so we don't have to worry about moving it as we go And once again, I'm going to take that to the ironing board and I'm going to press those with wrong sides together. So we get a nice finish. So there's our lovely pressed front panel. Keep trimming everything, keep it tidy. If you keep it tidy all the way along, you'll end up with a nice tidy finished product. And I'll just clip those two edges in place again to make sure they stay nicely aligned. And I'm going to top stitch along that zip edge again, just as we did with the first one. So let's top stitch again on this side, three mil or an eighth of an inch from the edge. There we are, looking good. Nice. And you know, we're about halfway through now, so I think it's probably time for the usual tea break. So I think it's important we always have a little tea break in the middle of a pattern, just to check up where you're up to and enjoy your progress so far. My biscuit today is a Tunnock's Caramel Wafer, another Scottish delicacy covered in chocolate <laughs> and they would fit nicely into your bum bag as an on-the-go snack. I really love these but they're so thick they actually hurt the top of your mouth when you bite into them but obviously I will. Anyway we digress. Now is the time to think about decoration for your bag and you can kind of see how it's going to end up looking now so you'd be surprised how adding the tiniest feature lifts the whole look of the bag. So decide if you want to add decoration at all, maybe just a badge, your logo tab, or you can go wild with rivets and studs. It's totally up to you. Or I could finish with a biscuit. I'm just going to add my logo tab centrally here, but there's lots of things you can do. You can add rivets, you can have a logo tab, a metal badge, whatever you want and wherever you want. So I'm going to add mine centrally about three quarters of an inch down but you can attach it anywhere you like you could even attach it to the bottom here remember you've got your seam allowances to take into account so not too close to the edges but I'm just going to stitch around that there I've put some double sided tape on the back so I've pulled my lining up out of the way I'm only stitching through the outer not through the outer and lining and I'll just stitch around there to attach Obviously you should be changing your thread to match. I'm using the same colour for speed. In fact, let's call it a style feature. Match them up. So as I say, you can do any amount of decoration you want on there. Just do it on the front. Keep your lining out of the way. Rivets, metal badges, logo tabs. You can also add pull tabs 
to the zip edges if you want. I prefer this without because I like to keep a clean edge when you're actually wearing it. But if you want to, just cut a little bit of vinyl or other non-praying fabric, probably whatever you used on the back of the bag for your strap, for your carrier. And just cut yourself a little, a little strip about the width of the zip. You're going to fold that in half and just stitch it facing inwards, matching the edges of your zip there. So once you turn the bag through, that'll actually pop out. But as I say, I prefer this one without, but that will work on any bag. And bear in mind, if you're on a domestic machine like me, you're adding extra layers in there over that zip itself. So always be wary of that if you haven't got a very powerful machine. A really nice quality zip and zip puller really make a difference as well. They always make a big impact. So if you can afford to do, to use a nice zip, then do. This one's from Zipper Valley. I'll put a link in below. Or you can just bling up a basic zip by adding a little strip to your puller. So just use a, a regular puller and then cut yourself a strip of vinyl or leather. Pull it through the hole in the zip tab. And again, that will give you a nice look to the zip. Just an added, added extra feature. So let's pull our zip about a third of the way open. We don't want to forget to do that because if you stitch up the sides and it's over here, then you're going to be in trouble later. So do remember that. That's an important point. Now I am going to just whiz around the outside within the seam allowance just to baste it all together because we want it laying nice and flat wrong sides together and not moving when we join our outers together. You don't have to do that again it's just cautiousness. You can even quilt the fabric if you wanted to at this point or add a few extra lines of stitching. So I'll just go around the outside within the seam allowance. It's just going to help me make sure everything stays in line. And of course, it'll stop me pulling any zip pullers off. Keep that zip held together as you pass over it. You can always do a back stitch over it too. So there we are, it's all held in place firmly. Trim up any edges. Any threads? It's a really, really fraying fabric, this. And now we're ready to join the outers together. So grab your outer with the belt carrier on. And we're going to place that right side down on top. Actually, I'm going to open my zip a little bit more here. And you'll notice how, as I stitched over the side, just to baste it in place. It's held the zip together at the side there too. You can trim your zips at this point, but I prefer to leave them on till the end. So lay your other outer piece right side down. So we've still got a lining piece on the side there, untouched, that's right. So let's clip that in place all the way around. Now you may find that you're um, not exactly spot on with the top edge with the lining and the outer. And if that's the case, don't worry about it. It's because you used a different width of zip or a different seam allowance at that zip edge than I did. So if you do have, you'll only have something like an eighth of an inch maybe difference. If you have, just trim it off, it's fine. Don't worry about it. So let's clip it all in place. So make sure everything is lined up top, sides, bottom. I'm going to stitch all the way around that with a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Here we go and all the way around. We're not leaving a turning gap here because we've got the zip that we can turn it through. Double check before we go any further that your zip puller is inside somewhere. Yeah, mine's in there, we're okay. You can always do a back stitch again over the end of the zip just for security. 
Now, as you're going around these curves, make sure you do them nice and and curvy. <laughs> you follow the edge nicely because that will be the outer of the bag, so you don't want unequal curves on your corners. There we go. So we're stitched all the way around. Beautiful, looking lovely. Trim up your last few threads and make sure it's all tidy. And now we're going to add that last lining piece. You see how quickly it all comes together. It's a really easy project, this. So flip so that your lining, the right side of your lining, is showing on top. And then grab your remaining lining piece. This is the whole one that they had at the side. I'm going to lay that down, face down on top, matching all the edges bottom, top, sides, and clip that in place. Flip that back so you can see the reverse of the outer piece because this is where we've already stitched and we want to follow that stitch line around now. We're going to leave a gap at the bottom so we can turn the bag through. So leave as big a gap as you can whilst coming around the curve. So come around your curves and then stop. And the bigger the gap, the better, obviously, so it'll be easier to turn through. And we're going to follow the line of stitching all the way around that's already on there. If you're worried about following it exactly, you can stitch just on the outside. So don't go inside the line. If you're going to go anywhere, go outside towards the seam allowance. So I'm going to start here all the way around to that side. Nice strong back stitch beginning and end. So there we are, we stitch all the way around. If you turn it over, you can see that we've got the gap at the bottom still. And now we're ready to turn that through. But before we do, let's trim our seam allowances down to half and clip the corners, but don't trim the opening gap. So leave that as long as you can. Be brave. Your zip edges can disappear here as well. I don't know why I like to leave mine onto the end. I always do. I think it's fear of doing something wrong and having to go back and redo it. Okay, so when I get to that gap, I'm going to leave that long. I'm not trimming that portion. Get rid of that. Cleaning pixies can sort that out. That is me, by the way. I don't have cleaning pixies, really. And then we're ready to turn that through. So let's put our finger in here so you're going to be turning through and you'll the bag once you've turned it through your bag will actually be inside out so don't panic that you've made it wrong you're going to be you're going to be looking at the right sides of the lining so let's turn it through fingers only please I have to start with a corner normally pull a corner through and then work a little bit at the time it's not bad in fabrics actually if you're in vinyl or cork there's a little bit more rumpling with it but fabric is fine so we can see what we have here you've got the bag inside out now i'm going to take that to the ironing board and i'm going to press in that seam allowance at the bottom because we need to close that off before we go any further so i press that just literally folded in those edges at the seam allowance and now I'm afraid folks, it's slip stitch time. So grab a needle and just close that gap with a quick slip stitch. So you're just catching in lining to lining. Be really careful not to grab the outer in there. So you've got a fair bit of seam allowance there to work with. So attach it to the seam allowance rather than to the outer for the bag. And see how that will fall on there. So I won't do it now because I hate hand stitching. And I do have a cheat at the end if you're really, really lazy like me. So we're ready to turn that through properly. So open your zip. We're ready for the reveal. 
Let's turn that through. Again, fingers only, please. No pointy objects anywhere. Certainly no scissors. It's looking really cute. It's a really noisy zip, that one. So I'll take that to the ironing board again and give it a really nice press. Look, I've still got a, a thread end there. Let's press that and have a look at it. So I've pressed that. I'm really pleased with it. It's looking really, really sweet. Be careful if you've added leather accessories or vinyl accessories anywhere. You don't want to iron on top of those. My little cheat for sealing in the edges and the bottom is you can just put a line of stitching really, really close now to that bottom edge so you don't have to bother slip stitching inside. I'm sure it's not in a rule book anywhere and I'm sure it's completely illegal, but just check your edges are overlapping inside. Nicely tucked in and if you just run a tiny line of stitching across there, that'll seal everything in for you. But otherwise we're finished. So grab a suitable belt from your wardrobe. This one, I'm gonna use a little thin belt, but obviously you can get a real chunky one through there as well. Thread it through and you're ready to go. How sweet is that? So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and we'll make lots and lots of these adorable, quick little bags. The links for the pattern piece and many of the items I used in today's tutorial in the, are in the text below the video. Just scroll down. Join my Facebook group to download the pattern piece and for regular freebies and post your pics there for all of us to enjoy. Lots of help there too with all your bag making queries. If you've enjoyed today's video, please do subscribe to my channel while you're here on YouTube. And why not try a different size or a different shape and show us what you create. What are you waiting for? Go sew!